Example number seven, the kinetic energy of a molecule. In part A, we are asked to determine the average translational kinetic energy of an oxygen molecule at a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius, assuming that the oxygen gas can be treated as an ideal gas. So in A part, to find the average translational kinetic energy per molecule, we would use the formula K average equals 3 halves times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature in Kelvin. The temperature given in the problem is in Celsius, so hopefully you realize the first thing you need to do is change that temperature from Celsius into Kelvin. So to change from Celsius to Kelvin, we need to add 273. And that would give you an answer of 300 Kelvin. So now we're going to put that temperature of 300 Kelvin into our formula. We have 3 halves times the Boltzmann constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the power of negative 23 joules per Kelvin, multiplied by the temperature in Kelvin, which is 300 Kelvin. And you can see that the units of Kelvin cancel out. Hopefully as a reminder that you need to change that Celsius to Kelvin. And you get an answer of 6.21 times 10 to the power of negative 21 joules, and that's the amount of energy that one single molecule would possess on average. Okay, part B, we're asked to find the total amount of energy in the amount of moles that we're given. So the total translational kinetic energy. Remember that we're only dealing with just translational kinetic energy. There are other types of energy, and particularly with oxygen, it would also have rotational kinetic energy, but we're neglecting that and only looking at the translational kinetic energy. And so we're going to assume that the total amount of internal energy is really just the total translational kinetic energy. So we're going to say it's equal to 3 halves times N, the number of moles, times R, the gas constant, times the temperature in Kelvin. Now there's another way I'll show you that you can use as well. We'll do that in a second. So let's substitute in here. We have 3 halves times moles. We're told that we have one mole of gas. So let's substitute that in, one mole. And then we have the universal gas constant, which is given as uh, 8.314, I believe, or 8.315 depends on which textbook I guess you're using. I'm going to be using 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin and then multiply by the temperature which is 300 Kelvin. And that gives you an answer that is roughly equal to 3,740 joules. This is the total amount of energy. Now, there's probably other ways to do this. You, I suppose since you know how much their energy is per molecule, if you want it, uh, just, a, just a different way of doing this, you could find the total number of molecules in one mole of, of substance. You have one mole and you multiply by Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 uh, molecules per mole. And so you get an answer of 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules. And so if you were to determine the total amount of energy, uh, you, you would just take the average kinetic energy that you get per molecule and multiply by the number of molecules. So another way you could do this is taking 6.21 times 10 to the power of negative 21 joules um, and multiplying by 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules. And that, if you multiply those two numbers, you also get an answer of 3,740 joules. Okay, moving on to part C. We're asked to determine the uh, root mean square velocity, or what's known the RMS velocity in short, for an oxygen and nitrogen molecule, assuming that they uh, once again can be treated as ideal gases. Again, you'll find there's two ways that you can solve this particular problem. If you were to try to find the RMS velocity of, say, oxygen, uh, you could use the following formula, which is the root of 3 times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature divided by the mass per molecule. Uh, you'd have to look up the mass of an oxygen molecule. Um, and if you look that up in on the internet, you'll find that it is 5.31 times 10 to the power of negative 26 kilograms. And 
Then on top you would have 3 times the Boltzmann constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the power of negative 23 joules per Kelvin, and then multiply by a temperature of 300 Kelvin. And if you put that into your calculator, you'll get an answer of, let me just move this out of the way here, you'll get an answer of uh, 484 meters per second. And similarly, you could do the RMS velocity of, say, nitrogen, N2, and use a similar formula, 3 halves Boltzmann constant times the temperature, but now the mass of a nitrogen molecule, which again, you could look up on the internet, which is 4.65 times 10 to the power of negative 26 kilograms, and you will get a final answer, after you put that in your calculator, of 517 meters per second. So this is one way you can do it if you knew the mass of a single molecule. The alternate way that you might be tempted to do right off the bat, which I find is probably easier because you might not know this kind of information of the mass per molecule, is to uh, use the molar mass in kilograms per mole. Let's show you that. I'll just race, race this and redo the problem once more in an alternate way. So in a molar mass way, you could use the square root of 3 times the universal gas constant times the temperature in Kelvin. So this would be 3 times 8.314 uh, joules per mole Kelvin, multiplied by the temperature in Kelvin, which is 300 Kelvin, and then divided by the molar mass of oxygen. And remember, oxygen is really, there are um, two oxygen atoms, each of 16 atomic mass units, and, or 16 grams per mole, and then multiply by 2, which gives you 32 grams per mole. But we need this to be in kilograms, so really this is going to be 32 times 10 to the power of negative 3 kilograms per mole. And hopefully you realize we need it in kilograms because we need an energy, if you see up here, is in joules, which is a newton times a meter, and a newton is a kilogram times a meter per second squared. So when you put that into your calculator, you'll get an answer of 484 meters per second. And then similarly, you can do the RMS velocity for nitrogen. And in nitrogen, the uh, a single nitrogen atom is 14 grams per mole and again you need to multiply by 2 because it's a diatomic molecule so it's really 28 grams per mole which then you need to have it in kilograms per mole so this is going to be 28 times 10 to the power of negative 3 kilograms per mole and then when you put that all into your calculator you get 517 meters per second you'll notice upon reflection that these speeds are quite high. This is like a thousand miles per hour, these speeds of these molecules. Remember, they're very, very light. In fact, also look at it too, and notice the lighter molecules, nitrogen for example, is going to go faster because the RMS velocity is inversely proportional to the molar mass or the mass of a molecule. So the RMS velocity is not only inversely proportional to the molar mass, but also is directly proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. And be careful when you solve problems like this that you don't mix up your two formulas. If you're going to use the molar mass, then use make sure you're using the gas constant, and this is M for the molar mass. If you're going to use the sort of microscopic version and you're looking at per molecule, then you're using the Boltzmann constant with that mass on the bottom. Okay, and that's it for this example.